Good evening, I'm Shania Chavis. And I'm Bob Howick. Flooding continues to plague the PD. One lane is already closed on Highway 52. Reporter David Faraday joins us live to tell us if the bridge will close. David? Well, Bob and Shania, I'm on Highway 52, and as you can see, I'm wading through quite a bit of water out here. Now, Mitra Lotfi was out here earlier today, and she has this report. William Locklear has worked for the Highway Department in Florence County for six years, and he says he's never seen Highway 52 flooded like it is now. For him, the water means lots of overtime. Well, we've been out here since 8 o'clock uh, yesterday morning, and really what we've been trying to do is trying to keep the uh, traffic flowing and, you know, all the... Uh, keep from having any uh, accidents or anything. The overflow from the Lynch's River began spilling onto the highway late last night. The highway department says that's because the road in this area is lower than the bridges. By this afternoon, more than an inch of water covered the road in some areas just south of the river. Locklear and the other maintenance workers are responsible for channeling traffic around the water and closing some roads if necessary. But when the water subsides, their work won't be finished. We'll have to go in and check all our bridges to make sure that they're still safe. It will probably go into six and eight weeks for us making repairs on uh, most of the drainage structures. In Florence County, Mitra Lot, WPDE Action News. Now they got highway patrolmen on each side of the bridge to keep people out of the water and everything. And I pulled over and talked to one of them earlier, and he told me that uh, the water's dropped about a foot in the last hour. And they think that tomorrow, by tomorrow morning, all the water will be off, and they'll be able to open it up to four lanes again. Back to you, Bob. All right, sir. Thank you. Well, some South Carolina... Authorities say there's been an increase in bad checks in our area. In this week's Carolina Agenda, Cassandra Finch tells us it's a problem that they may never solve. Shania, it's been going on for years. Law enforcement has spent time and money to combat the problem, and merchants are spending millions to compensate for unpaid items. But it may be the consumer who ends up paying the most. Checks have become a fast and easy way for some consumers to get what they want now and worry how they'll pay for it later. Some stores like the Limited have suffered huge losses from sold items that remain unpaid. Dr. Jones, this is Beverly Scott calling from the Limited. We have a return check here in your name, sir. And the bank Beverly Scott works for the Limited and almost every day she tries to collect overdue checks. We're having a pretty bad problem with bad checks. We receive bad checks daily. The Limited is fighting back and has installed a check scanner. In a matter of seconds, the scanner tells whether the consumer has outstanding checks. But Beverly Scott says the store must still go through a lengthy search to collect payments. We contact the bank to see if that check could be redeposited. Then if we have no luck there, then we will contact the customer three times by telephone. But bank managers are the first to notify stores of the bad news, that a check has been returned for insufficient funds. We have hundreds of those come back daily, and it's very costly to the bank to process those types of checks. Banks are always paid first. Merchants must reimburse the bank for the check and wait for the consumer to pay them. One store manager says even though she always checks for ID, a person passing a bad check is hard to identify. I estimate that we lose anywhere from $500 to $1,000 a year in uncollectible debts. Um, it, it, it takes a big chunk for the people that do pay and do have to somehow cover the cost of our losses. And higher prices for consumers can sink a profitable business deeper into debt. In tomorrow night's agenda, I'll take a look at what the law says about bad checks and how the criminal system prosecutes offenders. Bob? All right, Cassandra, thank you. Thieves posing... The United States and Iraq still haven't set a date for talks, and this leaves American soldiers busily preparing for combat. Amanda Lamb has been visiting local National Guardsmen training at Fort Stewart, Georgia. So, Amanda, I guess the question is, what are the soldiers expecting to happen? Well, Bob and Shania, at this point, they're unsure, just like the rest of us. They do know, however, they will be home at their local armories Sunday night, like this one in Conway, to spend the holidays with their families. But beyond that, they're just waiting and preparing for the worst. Even after weeks of training, National Guardsmen at Fort Stewart, Georgia, still don't know what they're marching into. Nobody knows exactly what's going to happen. I don't think it, you know anyone in Washington, wherever they're at, knows. I'd like to know, and 
it would be a lot easier to know. Sitting here from day to day, uh, going over the same thing over and over, uh, it gets sort of frustrating, and we're just really, really ready to go ahead and get this over with. Though they've been physically prepared for combat, the emotional preparation for war comes less easily and is often more complicated. They don't want to do it, but then again, on one hand, they, they kind of, I guess, have a little bit of romantic notions about what's going to go on, and uh, they know they have to know their stuff. I don't want to go, but in a way, it's, it's kind of exciting, and uh, I just hope it's over soon. I think it'd be uh, be lying to myself. I say I wasn't scared, but I'm, I'm anxious. I think it's going to be uh, sort of excited and uh, a little tense about it, but I just look at it as a positive learning experience and an adventure. Most soldiers feel they could rest easier if they knew what the future held. I'd like to have a crystal ball so I could sure see what's going down the road in, say, five, six months. But uh, it's, it's antsy. It's antsy to say the best. But uh, we, we're here just to do what we have to do, and we'll play it one day at a time. After the holidays, the men will be heading to Fort Irwin, California, for intensive desert training with the Army. Amanda, tell us, what was the, uh, the mood like when you visited the soldiers? Well, it appeared that their spirits were very high, Shania. Training's going very well, and of course, they're thrilled that they're going to be home for Christmas. But on the other hand, they're frustrated that they don't know what's going to happen. They're scared they may actually have to go to war. And of course, they miss their families. But in general, morale seemed to be very high, and they say they're prepared to do the job if called. All right, thanks a lot, Amanda. We really appreciated your, your piece from Fort Stewart, Georgia. Thank you.